Hello everyone, welcome to Legacies Academy. <clears throat> we are adding one more video to the series of the previous year's history questions. Okay, before watch continuing watching this video, make sure that you have checked out the videos where we have talked about the previous year's questions related to the history from 2022 in the year 2021 and also in the year 2020 okay so this is a fourth video in the series where we will be talking about the previous year's prelims questions that were asked from history in the year 2019 and also don't forget to check out our playlist where we have talked about the previous year's questions with related to geography economy and also polity okay let's begin <clears throat> let's look at the first question the first questions from the ancient history that is a very important chapter in the ancient history that is indus valley civilization which one of the following is not a harappan site okay which is not a harappan site the question is not asking about which is a harappan site it's a negative statement where the question is asking about which is not a harappan site okay let's look at the options chunnudaro okay very very important whenever we talked about the ivc we have talked about this site and we have also talked about this is the only site in the ivc which doesn't have citadel okay code digi that is amri code digi mature harappan site and also pre harappan site sagaura copper plate okay just remember this these two are eliminated these two are ivc sites and desalpur okay so it's a it's a very common thing to get confused between option c and option d because they're very close desalpur we have not talked about this and nitin singhania doesn't have mentioned about desalpur and also the ncrt but desalpur is also a later harappan site in the kutch region of gujarat okay it is a ivz site if even you don't know this even if you don't know this particular fact you would have studied under the Mauryan Empire about the Sagaura copper plate. See, the Sagaura copper plate is one of the earliest copper plates to be found related to Mauryan Empire. It also talks about how Chandragupta Maurya managed the empire when there was a famine. Okay, that is Sagaura copper plate and there is the information that is there in the Sagaura copper plate. If you know about, if you have studied about Sagaura copper plate even in the Mauryan Empire, you can tick C as the answer. Okay, this is not a Mauryan, sorry, this is not a IVC site. Second question. In which of the following relief sculptures inscriptions is Ranyo Ashoka mentioned along with the stone portrait of Ashoka? See, the Ashokan inscription, this particular question was asked because in the year 2018, there was a news because of the excavation that happened at a place called Kannaganahalli, at a place called Kannaganahalli in Karnataka. Kannaganahalli in Karnataka okay so ASI excavated the Ashokan inscriptions and also found out that this is a place where we have the Ashoka addressed as Ranyu Ashoka okay this is a very important current affairs inspired question from ancient history third with reference to forced labor that is Vishthi in India during the Gupta period which one of the following statements is correct it was considered a source of income for the state, a sort of tax paid by the people. Okay. It was totally absent, totally absent. Look at the extreme statement, totally absent in the Madhya Pradesh and Kathiawa region of the Gupta Empire. The forced labor is entitled to weekly wages. See, we're talking about forced labor and also we're talking about wages. Doesn't go well. The eldest son of the laborer was sent as the forced labor. Doesn't go well. This is also an extreme statement. So the correct answer is A. It was considered as a source of income for the state, a sort of tax paid by the people. That is Vishthi during the time of Gupta Empire. Fourth question. In the revenue administration of Delhi Sultanate, again, we're talking about medieval history. You can see there were three questions from ancient history. And this is the fourth question in the from the medieval history we're talking about. The change of the, the charge of revenue collection was known as Amil. Okay, the charge of revenue collection was known as Amil. The Ikta system of Sultans of Delhi was an ancient indigenous institution. Okay, the office of Mir Bakshi came into existence during the reign of Kilji Sultans of Delhi. This is the question asked. Let's let's forget the first statement. Okay, do not even bother if you don't know about the first statement. Look at the second one. The Ikta system of the Sultans of Delhi was an ancient indigenous institution. 
Whenever we have talked about Ikhta system under Delhi Sultanate, that is slave dynasty, which ruled from 1206 to 1290 AD, we have talked about an important person and a ruler called as Iltamush. It was Iltamush who for the first time introduced Ikhta system. Ikhta system talks about the land being divided into two parts. One is Ikhta, other one is Khalisa. Okay, one is Ikhta, other one is Khalisa. So the revenue that is got from the Ikta land is used for the general administration that is day to day purposes of the administration. The revenue that is got from Khalisa is used by the king for his personal consumption. This is what is Ikta system which was started by Iltamush. If it was started by Iltamush then there is no chance that it was an ancient indigenous institution. So eliminate the second statement. Clear? Now, the third one, office of Mir Bhakshi came into existence during the reign of Khilji Sultans of Delhi. You would have been studied under Mughals that it was during the time of Akbar that Mir Bhakshi came into existence. Third statement is wrong. The correct answer is A. Consider the following statements about the Charter Act of 1813. You can see there were three questions from ancient history. There was one question from medieval history. Now we'll be talking about four different questions from modern history. Consider the following statements about the Charter Act of 1813. I always tell you every year there will be a question on the acts. 1813, 1833, 1858, 1892, 1909, 1919, 1935. If you're perfect with these acts, then easily you can get one, one uh, question correct. It ended the trade monopoly of the East India Company in India, except for the trade in tea and trade with China. Very, very true. This is the first statement under the Charter Act of 1813. This is the first statement. It asserted the sovereignty of the British Crown over the Indian territories held by the company for the first time. For the first time, the Indian territory was called as the British possessions in India, Okay, which means the same. The revenues of India were now controlled by the British Parliament. Very, very wrong. By the Charter Act of 1813, the East India Company renewed its tenure for 20 more years. That is the reason why we will have one more Charter Act in the year 1833. Simple. Okay. Eliminate the third option. You will find the answer. You're looking at it out of C, out of 10 questions. If we solve out of these 10 questions, six questions would be answered just with the elimination method. Okay. Just with the elimination method. With reference to the Swadeshi movement, consider the following statements. Okay. First one, it contributed to the revival of the indigenous artisan crafts and industries. Very true. This is what happened dur during the Swadeshi movement because Swadeshi movement was the erstwhile Atmanirbhar Bharat scheme, which means you only procure or you only buy goods which were made in India. Okay, because of that, the Swadeshi, because of the Swadeshi movement, the indigenous handicrafts and the textiles, they got boost. The National Council of Education was established as a part of the Swadeshi movement. Very, very true. This is what happened. National Council of Education was established as a part of Swadeshi movement. The correct answer is both one and two. Movement and the organizational leader. We just have to match the movement in the column A with the leaders in the column B. Okay. All India Anti-Untouchability League, Mahatma Gandhiji, very well matched. All India Anti-Untouchability League was started in the year 1932 when Mahatma Gandhiji was in jail. Okay. Why was Mahatma Gandhiji in jail in the year 1932? He attended the second round table conference. As soon as the second round table conference was a failure, he landed in India. As soon as he landed in India, the British government thought he would again start the civil disobedience movement that he had discontinued. So with that intention, British government imprisoned Mahatma Gandhiji. Okay. This is the reason why and uh, this is the same time when he's also talking about Harijan campaign. So this is when he started All India Anti-Untouchability League, which means the option one is true. All India Kisan Sabha, Swami Sahajananda Saraswati in the year 1936, Swami Sahajananda Saraswati started All India Kisan Sabha. Self-respect movement, E.V. Ramaswami Naikar around 1920s in down south, that is South India, Tamil Nadu to be specific and uh, parts of Kerala. 
E. V. Ramaswamy Naikar started self-respect movement in order to oppose the Brahmanical hierarchy and to give more importance and more employment opportunities in the public sector for non-Brahmins. That is self-respect movement. So the correct answer is D. We we'll look at the next question. With reference to the British colonial rule in India, consider the following statements. Mahatma Gandhi ji was instrumental in abolition of the system of indentured labor. In Lord Clemsford war conference, Mahatma Gandhi ji did not support the resolution on recruiting Indians for the war. Consequent upon breaking of the salt law by the Indian people, the Indian National Congress was declared illegal by the colonial rulers. Okay, a, a bit difficult question. I would consider this to be of moderate difficulty. But again, again, the elimination method is our rescue. Okay, elimination method, eliminate one statement and you're very near to the answer. Look at the second one. In Lord Clemsford war, war conference, See, in the mainstream history books, even in the Spectrum and also the NCRT, you will not find the reference to Lord Clemsford War Conference. You will not find it. But just imagine, just think over. This is what, this is what you will have to do in the exam. You will have limited knowledge. You will have to apply that knowledge to find the answer. Okay. Just think that war conference has happened and Mahatma Gandhi ji has attended the war conference. See, here we are talking about, when we are talking about uh, Lord Clemsford war policy. It can't be the Second World War. It has to be the First World War between 1914 to 1918. It has to be the First World War. Okay. See, what was the references? What was the responses of Indian nationalists for the First World War? The INC for that matter did not oppose, did not oppose or INC for that matter did not decide to take chance or take advantage of the British difficulty in the First World War. Did not, I'm making this again, did not think about taking undue advantage of the British difficulty in the First World War, which means, which means because of the First World War, if the Indians are getting employed in the British army, do you think Mahatma Gandhi ji will not support this? Correct? Because INC did not oppose it, which means Mahatma Gandhi ji supported the resolution on recruiting Indians for the world war, which means the second statement is wrong. Eliminate the option two, you will have the answer. Simple. Okay. Out of the three statements, you will have to find that one deciding statement and think over applying all the logic by the information that you have to find the answer. Okay, this is how majority of the questions in the UPSC prelims exam will work out. With reference to the international movement, consider the following pairs. Tej Bahadur Sapru, President of All India Liberal Federation. K.C. Negoy, Member of the Constituent Assembly. Yes, he was a member of the Constituent Assembly. P.C. Joshi, General Secretary of the Communist Party of India. All these people are correctly matched. So the correct answer is option D. Okay, so we have come to the end of the video. These were the nine questions that were asked from ancient medieval and the modern history in the year 2019. So stay tuned for our next video where we will be talking about the previous year's questions that was asked in the year 2018, which were from ancient medieval and the modern history. For more such enriching videos, consider subscribing to the Legacy IAS YouTube channel. Have a nice day. Thank you.